Hi, welcome to Detours Understanding Acquired Brain Injury. And today I'm going to talk to you about uh, functional psychosis or basically acquired psychotic symptoms. Now, I'm not talking about like, schizophrenia outright, although it may be considered somewhat related to it in a way. But really what I'm looking more at is how a person can, after a traumatic brain injury, can acquire some symptoms that one would define as psychotic. Now, it's important to understand what psychosis really means. In this case, we're talking, at least in a clinical sense, we're talking about a person who is not in touch with reality. Now, it doesn't have to mean all the time in every way, but we're talking more about no matter what you say to them, you cannot convince them that facts point in another direction. And typically with acquired psychotic symptoms, um, we're more often talking about things like paranoia, um, the feeling that someone, something, that people are out to get them, um, or that there's somebody, somebody, some agency, the government, a company, whatever, someone is interested specifically in them or wants their knowledge, information, wants them personally, or some, some kind of... Um, something from them is, is spying on them or whatever. Now, these days with technology and, you know, with the fact that many companies do gather your information, there's a tiny grain of truth to that, um, that they are gathering. But then to take it beyond that, um, like they're doing this for some nefarious purpose other than trying to advertise, sell cheap junk. Um, you know, it's like the, the, the question being, you know, it's like, based on problems with reasoning is really where this becomes an issue. Um, are they gathering information? <laughs> yeah, you, you better believe they're, you know, but for what purpose? And based on false beliefs about oneself, one's importance, things like that. And we're going to look a little bit at um, where, where this comes from, what it has to do with the brain and the brain injury itself. And often, and sometimes quiet delusions of grandiosity one's more important than one is um and also hallucinations too um sometimes voices or sounds in many cases with brain injury it's less hearing voices but it's more sounds that aren't there um things like that sometimes seeing things that aren't there i want to talk about uh, neurobiology behind that and What's interesting also is that these symptoms do not usually with moderate or severe traumatic brain injury happen immediately. And that's because of the mechanism behind it. Um, traumatic brain injury induced or functional psychosis, um, it is due to um, when a person suffers traumatic brain injury, there is literally an atrophy. We see tissue loss in Interestingly enough, in the hippocampus, um, structurally speaking, when we're talking, um, this is the wrong half of the brain, but it does not have, um, my model does not have good representation. It would normally be in the right side. The research supports that the changes that we see in people who have functional psychosis, it would be in the hippocampus on the right side. It would be on the head of the hippocampus. Um, the head of the hippocampus contains both uh, neurons that control for both dopamine secretion as well as GABA. And we've mentioned the neurotransmitter GABA before. Um, the GABA neurons act in, as an inhibitor and the interneurons, which are those neurons which control signaling between the midbrain and the prefrontal areas um, and these interneurons communicate and signal a, a, a stop kind of signal and they add that kind of weighting that the weight the salience we've used the term salience when talking about salience network um, one of the other videos they basically say something is important or not important information that you have seen studied reviewed is important it's worth something, it's worth paying attention to, or it's not. And here is where some of the problems come in. Um, with atrophy over about a year or a little more than that, 
of the hippocampal head and those interneurons that send the signal that say, no, this information is not important, it's not worth paying attention to. Those atrophy, someone may see in effect signs or signals saying this is important in things where it's really not important. Um, and this is where these kind of delusional beliefs come from. We're adding weight to things that shouldn't have weight added to them. That if you see um, a message or something like that, that normally it, without this atrophy would be unweighted, seen as unimportant. The inhibitory neurons say, no, this is not important stuff. You know, discard. Um, that circuit is destroyed. And so everything gains weight. Everything is important. Everything is a message. Everything is important. Everything is pay attention to me, pay attention to me, pay attention to me. So disruption to the circuit, you could see how that would become um, a problem for and feed into paranoia. Also, the ability to screen out sounds um, and would lead to potential voices. You lose the ability to say that sound, that voice, whatever is being generated intrinsically, internally as a memory versus is, um, and so is or is not there as an external source versus a source inside the brain. And so again, inhibition for e external signaling again. And that is because weight is added to things that should not be added to importance uh, the brain signals something as important and normally the signals coming from that region of the brain from the hippocampus the head specifically of the hippocampus telling you do not pay attention to this it's unimportant it is irrelevant that signal of irrelevancy does not arrive and therefore the brain tags it as important worth paying attention to memorizing nope not important um and that signal never gets there and so it says everything is important and you could see how this would lead to paranoia or grandiosity when thinking about oneself you are important very important you're a king or whatever you must be because you are important everything you say is important you could see how malfunction here but it manifests differently in different individuals um and what receives a tag of salience importance um and so damage here and these changes happen over time. It's not usually something that would appear immediately because it takes time for the right hippocampal head to die off, for it to shrink. And we talked about how destruction of neurons is a slow process of starving off when you have white matter damage and the destruction and the shrink shrinkage of tissue. And so it is important if you, you have a loved one who becomes increasingly paranoid, things like that, it's because dopamine secretion and GABA secretion over time with changes and the input to the prefrontal lobe. Now, treatment is usually pharmacological. It involves second generation antipsychotics if you have somebody who is exhibiting the kind of paranoid thinking. Um, you also, one thing that's interesting, especially with the rise of conspiracy theories and things like that, um, people with these kind of paranoid thoughts, stuff like that, are more likely to exhibit belief in, um, in, in these kind of conspiracy theories, things like that. Are so, have some conspiracy theories been true in the past? Yes. Um, but the thing is, the farther um, attached they are to sense of reality, the crazier they're, like the Zeta Reticulans and stuff like that, about the green aliens and stuff, and the more likely you are dealing with delusional thinking, things like that. Um, obviously, um, if this kind of thing leads to harm to your loved one, if it's interfering with activities of daily living, or if it's going to get them arrested, yeah, and they're acting in a way you need to be more aggressive with it. Also, cognitive retraining and helping with cognitive therapy is important in order to facilitate um, changes in how they think. Medication can help um, with reduce, basically with a goal of reducing the dopamine levels, um, you, with, with do, you know, dopamine blockade. So you, you want to bring that down a bit because excess levels of an inhibitory transmitter inhibit thinking. And so medications will help reduce the inhibition of the break. Basically, the brain saying, stop that. 
You know, so that's why we're looking at those kind of medications. And cognitive retraining helps improve general thinking and the ability to examine one's thoughts. Um, and so that's, there are also other medications that can be used. The, some of the newer medications work on multiple neurotransmitters and their specific sites that they work in the brain. Um, and so these are the kind of treatments that are available for these specific problems um, with the paranoid ideation. And it can range. It can range from very subtle, like just this, my, my, you know, my loved one, my family member or myself. I seem to be, you know, like getting myself in some trouble with, with these thinking patterns versus uh, very severe, you know, trying to drive a car into, you know, into an embassy or drive a car into some, some major government building or whatever. Um, and requires different levels of alertness. A psychiatrist can help with medication management, a brain injury, um, med medical practitioner, things like that, therapist. You know, those are the kind of um, experts that you'd want to seek out for help in managing these kind of problems. And also, if they report hearing sounds that you absolutely cannot hear, what's important is not to dismiss um, some concerns, especially if they seem realistically plausible. It is important to respect and listen to what they have to say, but oftentimes if it's a recurring pattern, if everything and everyone is a threat, is a bad guy, everyone is a troublemaker, everyone is, this also ties in a negative attribution bias. And if the only good or right person is themselves, it's brain injury talking. Um, and if it is... Um, always, if everyone's out to get you, if everyone's got an angle, everybody, it is this all or nothing, it needs treatment. Um, it is important to look out for because it is, it, brain injury, again, the pattern is very binary, on and off, every and all, none and every. Those kind of signs are very, because it's associated with the thinking problem that they're a person with these kind of problems and a lot of the frontal issues is incapable of thinking, um, who has these extreme kind of reactions, is not able to process um, subtlety, shades of gray. Now, it's not true of everyone, but many, especially those who have the paranoid kind of thinking, they're not able to see that there are subtleties and that there may be more to it than that. And this is where cognitive rehabilitation helps. Again, even in those cases, you please, you need to pay attention and respect um, where they're coming from. You don't forcibly try to correct. You do try to help them see through practice retraining. You also do get in contact with psychiatrists, things like that. And you need to work with um, the patient, helping them see what the problem is. Um, but respect is important, even if they are struggling. It's not their fault. It's not their choice. This is something that's happened to them. All right, and so I just wanted to go over um, these these areas um, regarding uh, functional psychosis, as it's referred to, and some of the treatments. It's a combination of cognitive behavioral therapy along with antipsychotic medications. It might improve over time. Also, who they're with and who they're around, you know, you don't want to feed into it. You want to try to be supportive without reinforcing it. So it is important to make sure that the people that uh, the patient is with are not feeding into it. That is very important. Um, so you may want to watch out with whom they, you, you find them, things like that. All right. And so that is pretty much what I've got to say on, you know, on this, this, you know, on, on the topic of uh, traumatic brain injury, um, psychosis and and conspiracy theories and things like that it's like it is important to be wary okay thank you very much i uh, hope you have a good day and uh please click like and subscribe we'll be talking about more things along these lines um and uh, then ma'am thank you very much